Alrighty guys and gals, uh, I'm going to take a couple seconds here and talk about uh, heroes and generals and specifically the RTS component of the game and uh, how assault teams play into it. Uh, I wanted to share a little bit of information on assault teams because it took me a little while to find out exactly what they do. Uh, so first off, heroes and generals is a free to play first person shooter and uh, real time strategy game. Uh, you can find it on Steam or with a Google search. I will link the uh, website locations and Steam page locations in the description, so check that out if you're interested in it. When you load up the game, you're going to make your hero, and uh, you know you can name your hero, do whatever. You start off as infantry with an M1 Garand as an ally. Uh, I haven't played Axis, so I don't know what you start off with there, but you know, soldier and a gun, and then you go do stuff. Uh, the part that I want to go over is in the Generals tab. So, the RTS component of this game is this big war map right here. Um, the, the two main bases are London here for the Allies, and then Berlin, no. Yeah, Berlin, okay. Uh, wow, I just destroyed that map. Uh, so London and Berlin, and you've got the Allies, Allied Forces versus the Axis of Evil. And uh, on the left here you'll see the campaign map, which is the RTS map of the, the current game going on, and then the Assault Teams. Uh, and then if you have Assault Teams, you'll see them here on the right. So let's go to the Assault Teams tab. And from here you'll be able to buy and deploy different assault teams. Uh, so let's go over the first thing. To level up assault teams, see here you have your experience bar and you have stars. Um, so each star represents like a tier upgrade, right? Uh, I believe. And each experience bar, so you get an experience bar up, I think you get a star and a rank. Uh, obviously I haven't gotten it yet, but as you rank up you can specialize your assault teams into uh, you know, kind of different or more upgraded assault teams. Um, to, to get experience with them you just deploy them to battles and win. Uh, it looks like it's much... There's a, there's a variance on how fast squads level up. I've won two battles with my infantry, it's at 4%. I've won one battle, maybe two with my light armor and it's at 37%. So different, different assault teams will level up faster. Uh, so let's take a look at the assault teams and what the different options are available. Click on that little plus mark there. If you didn't see that, I'll backtrack. This little thing here to buy a new assault team. Uh, so you've got the four main groups, infantry, fighter squadron, light armor, and guard. Uh, infantry, you've got basic infantry, the grunts, motorized infantry, infantry that can get on in buggies and jeeps, mechanized infantry. Uh, I don't quite know how that difference differentiates from motorized, Again, they can move around in vehicles and paratroopers, you know, parachute in behind enemy lines and, and you know, grief bases and stuff like that. Fighter squadron, just planes. Uh, don't need them, need them to be any better, they already kick a whole lot of booty. Light armor, uh, tanks. Uh, you've also got the ability to upgrade them to medium tank destroyers, which are uh, light armored and fast tanks, but do really, really good damage to other heavy or light or medium armor. All sorts of armor. Uh, then you've got the, the medium tanks that you can upgrade to, and the heavy armor are just bigger tanks with bigger cannons and more armor. And then you've got the guard unit, which is another infantry unit, and you can... it's kind of like the defensive unit, right? It's the cheapest one to purchase. Uh, <clears throat> wow. It's the cheapest one to purchase, and uh, you can upgrade it into a whole bunch of different options. You've got, you know, the motorized guard, vehicles, anti-tank infantry, uh, people that can carry bazookas, and blow up other tanks. Recon, motorized recon, motorized anti-tank infantry, and mechanized recon. So a couple things to point out from this page are the the numbers right here. 72 infantry. This number here corresponds with respawns. So how assault teams interact with the first person shooter part of the game is when you send them to a node to attack, so if we look at a campaign map here, if we send them to a node that's that's currently in battle and we look at the resources, you can look at the players, but also the resources Someone has sent a heavy armor squad, uh, and they have 11 respawns left. Infantry, 60 respawns left versus the enemy's 54. You know, so you can compare different resource types going on in the battle to what your team has and what the enemy team has. And that's the numbers, those are the numbers that uh, these correspond to, right? So here you've got 21 tanks, light armor tanks, with 30 crew to drive them. So that's 30 respawns, 21 tanks. That way, if all your tanks get killed, your tank crew can still participate for a little bit. Guards, you got 36 respawns, so forth. Fighter pilots, 
16 pilots, 16 planes, one plane dies, one pilot dies, and you've got 15 and 15. Pretty easy. Uh, what else on that? We got leveling, we got specializing, we've got buying them. Mm, let's talk about diversifying. Uh, one other thing you should do, keep in mind, right here you've got 10 possible assault teams, right? I have a light armor and I have an infantry. Light armor, redeploying, if you want me, before I deploy I have to resupply, right? So whatever battle I'd been in the other night with them, I lost 8 tanks and 18 crew members. So to replenish that I need to spend 38 of the gold coins, the, the cash currency, or almost 11,000 of the uh, war funds. And these generate pretty slowly, the coins go real fast, you can get those easily, but the war funds take a longer time. So 10 grand to repair that. Infantry right now, I just want to battle with them, um, and they're all good still. Uh, but they're a lot cheaper. A, a full wipe of the 72 infantry costs 2500 which you will pretty much make in that battle, win or lose. So it's important to make sure you've got a mix of all these squads. You could go light armor and and have, well, just a whole force of tanks, right? But if you lose those for whatever reason, if you happen to go up against another battle where they've got more tanks or fighter pilots that can bomb you off the, you know, off the ground, uh, you're going to lose a lot of money. So diversify if you want to make make more money. Uh, what else? What else? We got leveled up. We got diversification. We've got specialization. Let's take a look at the campaign map. So, where's my infantry? There they are. I just want to battle down here, but let's talk about first where they deploy from. So, when you deploy an infantry unit or a tank unit, any unit, it's going to start at your, your home city. So, either London or Berlin for the Axis, which would be right. Yeah. So, you deploy from the base and you just send your units wherever you want them to go. And, and to send them places, you simply just click on the unit on the right hand side drag and drop and you can see this arrow here so I can send it to that node I can tell it to go attack there not really useful send it any old where I please right and uh, that's how you transfer your units around a couple important things to remember when you are moving around is to check out the enemy uh, stats like this would be a really good battle to enter right you've got three times their infantry they have one medium tank, which you can kind of avoid, just run away from it, and you've got your numbers on the on the vehicles aren't as good, but they're still pretty good. So you can send your you can send your troops to a node, and you can also queue up for that node and follow them into battle. So when you win manually, you'll get these two currencies, and when you win with your assault teams, you'll also get more of these two currencies. So if you play together, you get you know with your own assault team, you get double the points, which is oh spectacular. Um, and in case it's not being apparent how the assault teams in the first person shooter tie together, let me explain it here. So in these these resource stats, you've got all these numbers on our friendly side. And on the enemy side, you have all these. So these here are all assault teams that players have sent to this node to partake in the battle, right? And then these are the same, but for the enemy team. And right now, you've got a lot more people supporting it from our side, from the ally side, than from the Axis side. And so, if you join a battle with 20 infantry, and the enemy team has 20 infantry, and nobody resupplies it, and you lose all your 20 infantry, your respawns, then you're going to lose the battle. So, in order to win the war, you have to have people constantly funneling assault teams and troops and resources into the battles, and you can make really drastic pushes, you know, in inside enemy lines, and like this is going to cut off any sort of resupply, right? Anybody from here that just goes down here is going to run into all this access control territory and end up having to fight their way through. So you will have to go all the way around and it takes quite a while to move. Uh, so let's just show an example here. I'll move my assault team from this base here to this base here. Not a very big distance. If you look at the, gra the, the grandioseness of the map, it's a whole lot of distance to cover. And looking at how fast this little thing chinks along, like not going going any time at all. So there is a really big strategic component to capturing and pushing into certain into certain areas that that you can establish control or interrupt resupply. 
Now, when you're resupplying a squad or an assault team, I keep wanting to call them squads. When you're resupplying an assault team, and so say it gets here, there's a battle, I lose some guys, and uh, before I send into another battle, I need to resupply it. So I request supplies, you know, just by, okay, resupply, please. They spawn all the way up here in London and have to make their way all the way down to your assault team. So, uh, if you have a lot of assault teams and you want to be pushing into enemy lines, it might be a good idea to, you know, base up somewhere in the middle, attack here, request supplies, and then push your new troops out um, that weren't in battle and keep the pressure on. All right, so what do, what do we talk about? We got diversification, specialization, how to level up, how to move, what the numbers correspond with, uh, having multiple different times. Okay, I think I already mentioned this, but it's good to spread out your assault teams. Like, don't don't pitch them all in one battle. You certainly can, but if you lose that battle, you're losing all your assault teams, right? So it would be better to have them spread out on a few different battle nodes. That way, if you do lose one, you still have the chance to win the other and make some money. You know, if you put all your eggs in one basket and you drop the basket, all your eggs are done, did, got broke. So, yeah, that's about it for uh, assault squads. Uh, assault teams. See what I mean? I keep calling them fucking squads. Uh, assault teams, hopefully that gave you some little bit of introductory stuff to it and uh, answered any preliminary questions. There's plenty more to it. There's a lot more involvement. You can look up on the forums, look at different guides about, you know, the return ratio. Like, I think infantry is, you know, they get 1.33 times return on what it costs to repair them if they win kind of thing, um, whereas tanks get less. Uh, so you can do a lot more research in it, but just in the nuts and bolts on how to use it, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if it was indeed helpful and answered some questions for you without spending too much time hunting through the internet, uh, please give me some love and show, show it a thumbs up or, or subscribe. And uh, for those of you that did watch, I hope it helped, and see you next time.